Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the middle of the week. I appreciate so much you making Bible tract echoes a part of your day. Now, right now, my Bible sits open to the book of 2 Peter and chapter 3. 2 Peter 3, if possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. 2 Peter chapter 3, I'll begin to read at verse 10 here in just a moment. And if you can, find a pen and some paper, have them ready to jot down some notes. And I really do strive to make the Bible passage before us each day very clear and usable. And I think by taking some notes, it will aid you in putting this teaching time into action later on as part of your life. And that really is the point here in the passage in the verses we're looking at in 2 Peter chapter 3. Now, I've got a Bible track in my hand I want to talk to you about, but let me lead into our Bible study time this way. Now, have you noticed that there are a lot of folk in our churches who really do love to hear Bible truth taught? Now, I'm being serious right now. I get into churches and I get to preach the Word of God. I love doing that, but I love it when I see so many people who love having the Word of God taught to them. They love solid doctrine declared. But the problem usually comes when I try to make a lifestyle application based upon the doctrine. Folk don't like it sometimes when you preach about how their lives need to reflect the truth in a practical day-by-day way. Let me give you an example. Recently, a believer friend was talking to me and she kept using this phrase, oh my God. Well, after about the third time, again, she was a friend of mine. I interrupted her and I asked her if she was aware that she was breaking the third commandment that she was using God's name in vain in a useless, common way, and God's name is anything but common. Well, before too many minutes went by, she abruptly ended the conversation because, and I'm quoting now, she said, Mark, you're being too legalistic. Well, I say all that because if you struggle with that story, then you're really going to get frustrated with the passage before us today here in 2 Peter chapter 3, because the Holy Spirit's going to get some, give some practical information today. Get your Bible, get a piece of paper, join us, please. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. Do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The main thrust of the ministry here is not radio. We love our radio program, but our main thrust of ministry is that we publish gospel tracts in different languages and give them away. And I want to give tracts to you. I want to give you a free sample packet that I'll give you directions on that in a moment. But one of the tracts in the sample packet is this one entitled, When You Meet God. When You Meet God. Meet God. What will happen when you meet God? Will you meet him with a rejoicing heart because he's your savior? Or will you meet him with fear because he will be your judge? This gospel tract begins this way. Someday you will meet God. God's holy. He hates sin. The prophet Moses quotes God's own words when he says, I am holy. The prophet David wrote, thou art holy. But the Bible says about us, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. And it lays out the fact in this gospel tract that we are sinners. We are not holy, but we're going to meet a holy God. But the tract says how you and I can be ready to meet God because he becomes our savior, not our holy judge, but our holy savior. We can meet him with joy and rejoicing. That's the way God wants you to meet him, my friend. Do you know him as savior? This gospel track will lay out the plan of salvation very clearly. Let me send it to you, please. At the end of the program, my announcer will make known our contact information. 
please give us your name and mailing address. We'll send you that sample packet containing over 40 different gospel tracks. They're free. Please let me send it. This one, When You Meet God, will be in there. Read it, then give it away. Let's you and I become partners in the work of the gospel. If your Bible's open, look at chapter 3, verse 10. It says this, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat? We're going to stop right there. Now, verse 10 says that God is going to bring a fiery end to our physical planet. It's going to burn up. And as part of that time frame, God's going to judge sinners. All those whose names are not found in the Lamb's book of life are going to be cast into the lake of fire forever. All of that is recorded over in the book of the Revelation chapter 20. But then Revelation chapter 21 begins by saying that God is going to make a brand new earth and atmosphere. And at that point, eternity begins and there will be no more sin and no more sinners. Righteousness will be the hallmark of every single person and every single activity. If your Bible is open there to 2 Peter 3, look at verse 13. I didn't read it, but it says that there is going to be a new heaven and a new earth and righteousness will dwell in it. Now, that is God's plan for the future. Here in 2 Peter 3, Peter is writing to living saints who are living in a yet unchanged and very unrighteous world. Sin and sinners still do abound. It's the kind of world you and I know well because it's our world today. But in light of the righteous day that will come but is not yet here, present-day believers are to start living in a way that reflects the future righteous life they will have. They're to reflect it now. Now, four qualities, or on Monday I used the word types, four types of lifestyles are mentioned and identified as hallmarks of born-again people. No matter what century they are living, these things are to be seen lived out in our lives, even though we're in a sin-cursed world. On Monday, I spoke about the holy conversation mentioned there in verse 11. That was type of life pattern number one. Type number two, and still in verse 11, is that word godliness. Godliness. You may have a Bible translation that uses the word piety instead of godliness. Well, those two words really speak about the same idea. A godly person is one doing their life service before God and before men with a serious devotion to their responsibility to God. But also add to that, they're doing their duty with great compassion, compassion for God and compassion for men. That's the idea here of a godly life pattern. The third type of life pattern that you and I are to be living as believers is found in verse 12 by that word looking. Believers are to be a looking people. We are looking for the day when God steps in and brings justice onto sinners and makes a righteous world. Thus we say, even so come Lord Jesus. Well, you and I who know Christ are looking with anticipation for that day when we no longer have to battle our sinful nature. We no longer have to battle fleshly lusts. We look forward to the day when living righteously is the norm. It's the, it's the way things are. There's no exceptions to the norm. It'll be a righteous world. It's called the eternal day. The fourth and the last thing identified here about what is to be the pattern in the life style for you and I is still there in verse 12. It's the word hastening hastening. Verse 12 says, hastening unto the coming of the day of God. 
Now, when I read that, some people say that this verse teaches that you and I can make the day of the Lord get here faster by the kind of life we live. I understand why they say that, but I really don't think that's what the verse teaches at all. Now, friend, you and I serve a sovereign God, and he works things out based upon his own time clock. He's got his clock fixed. Think about the Christmas story. You remember there in Galatians 4, 4, there it says that in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. Now, there was a particular time in history in which God said his son Jesus would be born. Well, God has a pointed time in which he will bring judgment and destroy the earth. Now, that being said, you and I are to be hastening people. We are to live our lives day by day as if we could hasten the end of the world and bring in righteousness. Verse 11 asks this question. What manner or what kind of persons ought we to be? If your Bible's open, underline that word ought, O-U-G-H-T. It means that we are to be bound to or we are tied to a task. It means we must do it. The word must and the word ought here give the same idea. This same word was used about Jesus over in John chapter 4 when it says that he, Jesus, must, needs, go through Samaria. Well, why must he go through Samaria? Well, there in Samaria, there was a woman. She was going to be at the well drawing water. She needed to get born again. Even though she was not a Jewish person, she needed to be saved. And Jesus needed to give her the gospel. Still going on in John chapter 4, Jesus talks to the woman about worship, and he says this, that we must worship God in spirit and in truth. When the passage says we must worship in spirit and in truth, and Jesus must go through Samaria, the words must there translate the word ought that's here. Believer friend, you and I must begin to live holy, godly, looking, and hastening lives, lives of righteousness. We must live this way now, not waiting until God's perfect day begins. We must begin to reflect the righteous kingdom in which we already belong. We were, at the day, moment of salvation, we were transferred out of the kingdom of, of darkness into the kingdom of God's own Son. It's a kingdom of righteousness. Do people know that you're in the kingdom of righteousness because you and I are living a righteous life? Dear friend, if you're here and listening to this program today, perhaps you need to be reminded that your life as a sinner is not righteous. Oh, you may be living a more righteous life than somebody else you know, but we don't measure your righteousness by somebody else. You must measure your righteousness by the righteousness and the perfection of God. That's why God says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You fall short of God's standard. You're a sinner. But God has an answer for your sin. It's called the Son of God who died and shed his blood that you through him might be saved. Receive him as your Savior now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.